Guys, Jimo here again with Refinish Network, and today, as you can see, we have another very exciting video. We're going to be doing a custom paint job on this Cadillac. So, the first thing we're going to do is remove all of the trim. So, we're going to pull the grill off, the headlights, the tail lights, any pieces of trim that we can remove, we are going to do so because this is a high end piece of machinery and we want this to be flawless. So, I'm also going to pop the hood off and just place that on a stand so I can get paint in the uh, under hood area. So the next thing I'm going to do is debadge this car and you can see if you try and pull the decal off while it's cold it just kind of snaps off. So what I'm going to do is use a heat gun on all of the decals, Let's warm them up a bit, it's going to soften up the, the decal and you can simply peel it off pretty effortlessly. So you don't want to get it too hot that you're melting the plastic and even if this were a metal vehicle um, you don't want to get it too close because you can bubble the paint off as well. Now, since this is a plastic vehicle, the, the prep work is going to be very similar to what you would see me do on a plastic bumper. Now, the main difference that you're going to notice here is I'm not going to be using the gray pad, sanding paste, and water that I normally do because if I were to soak this, rinsing it off afterwards, I'd likely get water in all the, the little pockets all over the place and trying to paint it after, the chances are the water would then seep out and it would get in my paint and ruin the job. So. Um, basically with plastics there's quite a few different ways you can do it. Cleanliness is the name of the game so make sure that you wash it down with soap and water and a very good high quality plastic cleaner like I'm doing right now. Now I'm going to tape it like I would a regular vehicle that's going to be working from the inside and out so I'm going to do all the insides of my doors, the inside of my little jam area and I'm going to follow the tape along the line of that molding so once I pop that molding in place it will cover my paint line. And I've chosen to mask up my headlights and my taillights just because I don't know if I can get these stickers again. So rather than take any chances or have to MacGyver something at the end, we're going to go ahead and tape them up here. And we're going to pop on a wheel cover here to protect my awesome rims from getting any paint on them. Now if you look at the surface of my plastic here, you'll notice that it's pretty, not gouged up, but it's scratched up enough that uh, if you wanted to really get fussy, the way you could remedy that is by wet sanding that plastic down with say some 6 to 800 grit paper, and then you need to apply an adhesion promoter, then a primer, sand it all again, and then paint. So there'd obviously be a lot more prep work involved if you wanted, you know, a showroom finish, which, you know, I think I still come pretty close to on this job, but... Um, yeah, no. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to be doing here is just scuffing it with a gray scotch pad, and that's going to give me a little bit of mechanical adhesion, but as I was mentioning earlier, cleanliness is the name of the game, and that's much more important than the uh, sanding stages when it comes to plastic. Now, what I like to do at this point is go over it again with an alcohol-based uh, plastic cleaner, and the reason I like to use an alcohol-based plastic cleaner at this point it's more specific because I'm using the BASF system with their RM's 902 plastic cleaner. It takes about 45 minutes to flash and right before painting I don't want to wait 45 minutes. I want to wipe it down 15 minutes to be painting. So the alcohol based cleaner actually flashes quite a bit quicker and it actually has some anti-static properties to it so it'll help remove static from the plastic. And If you have a static build in your plastic it's going to draw dust in like flypaper into your paint and obviously we do not want that. Now the first thing I'm going to be applying here is my plastic primer, which is also sometimes called an adhesion promoter. In this case here, it's from RM, the BASF product, 868 is the number, and I'm going to put it on fairly light, so uh, just kind of more or less dusting it on here. And I just want to let you guys know that I got a lot of really good feedback from the last video I did where I stepped outside the paint booth and tried to incorporate some elements from various areas of the shop. And hopefully you guys can look forward to seeing some more videos like that in the near future. I actually have quite a bit filmed for the next one. I'm just struggling to get the time to put it all together. And you might find a little bit of overlap. Uh, I may try and showcase some jobs like this in more of the short version. But, uh, you know, you get the idea. So hopefully those will be coming out soon, and I hope you guys enjoy them.
And the next thing we're going to put on this is a sealer. This is RM's DP321. And the main reason I'm putting it on it is because this plastic has a lot of minor scratches on it that I'm hoping the sealer is going to fill. It's kind of a cheating way of doing things, but um, you know, when you're doing you know, a job that you don't want to sink five days into a sealer, it can be your friend at times. So uh, that's more the reason for it. I'm also going to a lighter color, and I was thinking that uh, this would help with my coverage as well. And as I mentioned before, this is for my son, so I want to save a little bit of money on uh, paint where I can. So what I've done here is reached into my old solvent ca cabinet. So I'm using RM Diamond paint, which is no longer allowed in my area. You're allowed to still spray it if you can get it, but the jobbers aren't allowed to supply it anymore. So I only have a limited amount of it. They, well, they still have a fair amount, uh, but uh, at any rate, this particular tint or toner that I've been using... I don't know if it sat too long or what, but it went on extremely transparent to the point where it probably would have taken about 20 coats to cover. So I ended up switching to a different toner after I put this first one down, and it seemed to work from that point on. So basically what I'm going to do here is spray the entire thing white, and if you haven't seen the design yet, I'm going to be bringing some red kind of like splattered from the bottom up. So the first thing I need to do is cover the entire truck with the first color, which is white. So after my white has splashed off, I'm going to start putting on my second color which is another color from my cabinet of mystery, RM Diamond, again. And I'm spraying it around 3 to 5 PSI, and it's just really splattering it out. And I'm just kind of looking for a random splatter. Um, at this point, it's kind of just it's creating a larger splatter, which is what I, what I want in this situation here. I guess you could probably even dip a brush in and uh, fire it down if you really wanted to be uh, creative, but this is going to work for me here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is bump up my pressure a bit and start to kind of color it in a little bit so it'll give us that you know, just hit a deer kind of look. And as I've mentioned before I do have DuPont's Chromax Pro on the way in. I should have that new paint line in either t actually tomorrow or the next day so um, it should be coming pretty soon. You should start seeing some videos using the DuPont Chromax Pro Waterborne. I did go do some training on it last week. Uh, it seems pretty interesting, so I'm excited to get, uh, get it going and get some videos up on it. So after our base coat is applied, we look a little something like this. So I'm going to be mixing these pearls into the paint and I'll show you what they look like here on top of a spray out card. There's bronze and opal and you can see they're just a powder and they give you that cool uh, pearly look which you'll see a little bit more at the end but you can see what they look like in the clear. I'm mixing it right into the clear. What you could do alternatively is mix it into an inner coat, coat to an inner coat and then clear over top and that'll give your pearls a bit better UV protection. So I'm ready to apply my clear after about 30 minutes of letting the base flash off. You want to give it a good amount of time to dry off the way you're, we're splattering on. It's not going to flash at a consistent rate, so uh, give it that extra time when you're doing something like this. And uh, I'm using a Limco clear, which is an economical clear. It's not anywhere near the top of the line, but it's going to do for what I need it on this job here. And I'm using my SATA RP around about 28, 29 PSI.
And when I put my second coat on, I'm a little bit mixed around. Um, you know, it's my first power wheel job, which has been a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but it's a little confusing on how to spray. So I thought, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to just go top to the bottom, walk around, but, you know, I think I created a little bit more work for myself in doing so. But, um, you know, either way, I don't think there was any runs on it. Nothing that caught my eye anyway. Once you, if you get a run in the red, though, you know, you can really lose a lot in the red. It's one of the most forgiving colors in terms of if you need to hide a screw up, uh, Red's kind of your go-to color for that, so just saying. And here's what she looks like off the gun. So after letting it dry overnight, I am ready to unmask it. And here's sort of the jam line on the inside. You can see I have a nice clean edge, which kind of indicates to me that I have some pretty decent adhesion. It is one of the most commonly failed things that you can paint, which is plastic. And uh, you want to make sure that you've developed some very good plastic prep routines. And then, of course, I need to put all of my trim back together, my grill, my headlights, and anything else that I've disassembled on it. And here is the end result. So that's it for this time, guys. Thanks again, as always, for watching, and we'll see you next time.